So everyone, welcome to our UN Office for Disaster Risk Reduction, Office in Incheon for Northeast Asia Global Education and Training Institute, 10th year anniversary and roundtable discussion. I think we're just about ready to begin. I'm Sarah Weda Picella with our office here in Incheon, and I'm pleased to introduce you to our moderator for uh, this first session, Ms. Loretta Hibergerde. Lori, over to you. Thank you very much, Sarah. Good morning, good afternoon. Welcome, everyone. Uh, it's really my pleasure to be moderating uh, today's session. Um, it is, as we know, UNDRR Onia's and Getty's 10th year anniversary and roundtable discussion on delivering capacity development for disaster risk reduction for the future. And as Sarah mentioned, my name is Loretta Heber Gerde. And I am the new chief, actually, of the supporting and monitoring Sendai Framework Implementation Branch of UNDRR, and I will be moderating today's session. But before we begin, a bit of housekeeping. I invite you all to choose either the English or Korean language channel, and note that all of the attendees will be muted by default. We will be taking questions, but that will be during the roundtable sessions that will follow this opening session. Now today, and uh, in this session, we are celebrating UNDRR's Office in Incheon for Northeast Asia and GETI, which is the Global Education and Training Institute. It's their first 10 years, a decade of success. This is an office that was established with the support of the Republic of Korea and Incheon much, uh, Metropolitan City. And its aim was to develop a new cadre of professionals in disaster risk reduction and climate change adaptation with the aim of building more resilient societies. But it is a story of shared success. The office's efforts have rippled and this could not have been possible without the collaboration and prioritization of disaster risk reduction, advocacy, implementation and capacity development among partners worldwide like many of you who are here today. These are from national and local authorities, training institutes, academia, but also the private sector and experts. We'll be hearing, first of all, remarks from Ms. Mami Mitsutori, who is the special representative of the Secretary General for Disaster Risk Reduction and the head of UNDRR, followed by Vice Minister Kim of the Korean Ministry of the Interior and Safety, and Mr. Mayor Park Namshun of Incheon Metropolitan City. And following their remarks, we will then hear from several partners on their shared achievement and partnership with UNDRR, Onia, and Getty. And with this, I welcome Ms. Metsutori's opening remarks. Thank you. Thank you very much, Laurie. His Excellency, Vice Minister of the Ministry of the Interior and Safety, Mr. Hee Kim Kim, His Excellency, Mayor of Incheon Metropolitan City, City Mr. Park Nam Chun, Excellencies, distinguished colleagues, esteemed guests. I'm delighted to be able to join you from Geneva to celebrate the 10th anniversary, indeed, of the establishment of the UNDR office in Incheon for Northeast Asia and the Global Education and Training Institute often known as Onea Getty. At the outset, I would like to express my deep gratitude to the government and people of the Republic of Korea for their support to this important facility and to the city of Incheon for hosting our office over the last 10 years. It is wonderful that we can celebrate this anniversary together. Incheon has become a great center of learning on disaster risk reduction for the thousands of government officials and other stakeholders who have flocked to there over the last 10 years. Incheon is also well known to many who have received training in their own countries from those who were trained in Incheon through the very effective scheme of training <laughs> trainers multiplying the work done from our office in Incheon. People have made the journey to Incheon in order to deepen their understanding of disaster risk and to become part of a new cadre of DRR professionals well versed in the priorities of the Sendai framework for disaster risk reduction. Onia Getty is the living proof of the importance we place on ensuring that policies and practices for disaster risk management are based on a firm understanding of risk in all its dimensions. 
Such knowledge is now being leveraged by our graduates in over 160 countries for the purpose of pre-disaster planning, for prevention and mitigation, and for improved response and recovery. COVID-19 is further proof of the steep learning curve we all have in front of us as we seek to master disaster risk in a world that is also coping with climate emergency. The work of Vonea Getty was, in many ways, the inspiration behind our decision to campaign strongly this year on the theme of strengthening disaster risk governance, which is a key priority for action in the Sendai framework. Looking at the massive number of casualty events which have occurred in the last 20 years, the death tolls in each case could have been significantly reduced if there had been greater focus on better and good disaster risk governance for more effective and efficient management of disaster risk. The early failures of many governments to prepare for a pandemic on the scale of COVID-19 also underlines all, how important it is to empower strong institutions and build their capacity to take preventive measures in the public good. And we have noted with great appreciation that our host country, the Republic of Korea, was one of the very few countries which did have a plan for a pandemic and was a shining example of good risk governance during these difficult times. There is every reason to celebrate the fact that over 12,000 professionals, including many civil servants and policymakers, have benefited from the training made available over the last 10 years. This number includes some 4,000 people who took part in online training delivered during this extraordinary difficult year. Onea Getty quickly adapted to the new circumstances and changed a challenge into an opportunity to reach out to more people than in previous years. And as a result, in terms of our webinar audience, nearly 6,000 professionals have participated. These webinars were delivered with partners, including COICA, NDTI, the Korean Ministry of Economy and Finance, Singapore, Making Cities Resilient Partners, WHO, the UN Office for South South Corporation, UNITA and UNDESA, and many, many more. Indeed, such agile adaptation expanded participation, enhanced our partnership, and brought practical disaster risk reduction tools and experience to many new actors who must now engage in a more resilient risk-informed recovery from COVID-19. This celebration also coincides with the deadline for the completion of target E of the Sendai framework, which seeks a substantial increase in the number of national and local strategies for disaster risk reduction in place by the end of this year. So far, some 93 member states have submitted data to the Sendai Framework Monitor that they have developed their national strategy for DRR. So there is more work to do. However, I am confident that the quality of many of those strategies received has benefited greatly from the inputs of people who have completed the training offered by Getty. More needs to be done on strengthening the quality of these strategies especially coherence between DRR, action on climate, and the SDGs. Getty will be focusing on this in the years to come as we seek to strengthen existing national strategies and encourage the development of more of them. Allow me to highlight some of the many successes over the last 10 years from ONEA and Getty. The UNDRR Office for Northeast Asia, ONEA, has played a key role in advising governments on the implementation of Target E, including contributing to a review of the National Disaster Risk Reduction Strategy of DPR Korea. The Korean School Safety Program, which began in 2016, has now become part of the National Campaign for Disaster Safety Training for Children. Multi-year cooperation in Mongolia has resulted in a strong national DRR strategy and local disaster risk mm -hmm. reduction strategies as all major cities and towns of Mongolia joined our Making Cities Resilient campaign. Ongoing collaboration with the Trilateral Cooperation Secretariat has resulted in agreements between the National Disaster Risk Reduction Center of China, the Asian Disaster Reduction Center in Japan, and Getty to share experience on capacity development 
and provide training opportunities for developing countries. Oniageti has played a critical role in building the capacity of cities to use the tools we provide to support the development of disaster risk reduction strategies, including the Disaster Resilience Scorecard for Cities and its Public Health Scorecard Addendum. I am delighted to share that while the 10-year-old Making Cities Resilient campaign operated from Incheon concludes at the end of this year, the new phase of the campaign the MCR 2030 initiative will roll out from next month as a grand alliance of core partners, including the World Bank Group and UN Habitat. And this initiative will focus very much on implementation of local resilience plans, in addition to raising awareness and developing these plans. I'm delighted also to announce that Onea Getty will continue to serve as the global secretariat to this initiative. Mm. And in conclusion, I would like to state that none of these achievements would have been possible without the support of the Ministry of the Interior and Safety and, and of the ancient metropolitan city over the last 10 years. We are most obliged to your generous support. That is why I'm pleased to share with you all that the government of the Republic of Korea and UNDRR have recently signed an agreement to renew our partnership for the next five years and we look forward to continuing to work together with the Ministry of the Interior and Safety and Incheon Metropolitan City for supporting disaster resilient societies globally. This important centre can play a very significant role in the decade of action mm. called for by the UN Secretary General as the world strives to become a more resilient place in very challenging circumstances. I thank you for your attention and wish you a very successful roundtable as you reflect on the learning from these last 10 years, celebrate the 10 years and look to the future. Over to you, Laurie. Thank you very much, uh, Ms. Mami, Mr. Tori. I now invite the remarks of Mr. He Kyung Kim, the Vice Minister, Ministry of the Interior and Safety of the Republic of Korea, which will be delivered by video. Please. 안녕하십니까? 행정안전부 재난안전대국입니다. 먼저 UNDR 온여와 같이가 축하드립니다. 아울러 이번 기념 행사를 준비하신 산자 바티아 동부가 사무소장 겸 국제 교육 훈련 연설 위한 시간을 내어 이 자리에 함께해 주신 마미 미즈토시 특별 대표님과 강남시 인천 광역시 당국을 비롯한 참석자 여러분께 감사드립니다. 여러분께서도 잘 아시는 바와 같이 동해안은 한국과 중국, 일본, 몽골, 북한 등 동북아시아 5개 국가 간의 재난 경감을 위한 협력을 추진하고 외내 재난 위험 경감 전략인 샌다이 프레임워크의 이행을 지원하기 위해 설립되었습니다. 한 개티는 유엔 유일의 재난 경감 분야 교육 훈련 기관으로서 재위험 경감과 기후 변화 적응 분야의 전문가 양성을 담당하고 있습니다. 올해는 유엔과 대한민국 정부가 이러한 운영와 개티를 인천에 설립하기로 합의하고 그 협정을 체결한 지 10년째 된 일입니다. 지난 10년간 양 기관은 전 세계 158개에 이르는 국제기구, 정부, 학계, NGO 등과 긴밀한 네트워크를 구축하고 협력 체계를 강화해 왔습니다. 다양한 국제 행사를 통해 재난 예방과 도시 보건력의 중요성에 대한 인식을 제공하였으며 149개국에서 8,000명 이상의 재난 위험 경감 전문가를 육성하는 등의 발목할 성과를 달성하였습니다. 행정안전부가 지난 10년간 두 기관과 함께하며 보내드린 지원이 전 세계 재난 경감에 도움이 되었다는 사실에 부담을 느끼며 이러한 성과를 달성하기 위해 그동안 노후를 아끼지 않으신 운영와 개티의 음, 음. 여러분께 감사의 말씀을 드립니다. 지금 세계는 새로운 위기에 직면하고 있습니다. 이전 곳곳에서 이상 기후로 인한 초대형 태풍과 산불, 북한적 한파와 가뭄이 빈번하게 발생하고 있습니다. 
그러나 일부와 같은 극경을 초라하는 신경 조절병이 창궐 함에 따라 대개 각국이 전염병 퇴치를 위해 도군 분투하고 있습니다. 또한 도시와 산업화에 따라 개나라의 양상은 갈수록 더욱 복잡해지고 있습니다. 작년에 고령화 빈부 격차의 심화로 인한 지난 취업계 팀의 증가, 생태계 파괴와 기후 변화 등의 요인은 재난으로부터의 희공력을 감소시키는 원인이 되고 있습니다. 이와 같은 재난 환경의 변화는 이제 개별 국가 차원의 재난 경감 노력만은 한계가 있고 각국이 지식과 정보, 과학기술을 공유하며 함께 힘을 합쳐 새로운 위기에 대처할 것을 요구하고 있습니다. 국가별로 가지고 있는 재난에 대한 노하우를 공유한다면 생착오를 줄이면서 재난 위험에 보다 효과적으로 대처할 수 있을 것입니다. 또한 재난에는 국경이 없고 한 국가의 피해가 인접 국가에 바로 직접적인 영향을 미칠 수 있으므로 지역 차원의 협력이 필수적으로 요구됩니다. 이러한 점에서 앞으로 UNDR을 중심으로 재난 위험 경감에 대한 각국의 지식과 경험을 보다 적극적으로 공유할 필요가 있다고 생각합니다. 분야를 중심으로 동네 국가의 역량을 결집해 공통적인 재난 분야 이슈에 공동 대응한다면 각국에 큰 도움이 될 것입니다. 또한 온유와 개티에서 주관하는 각종 국제회의와 세미나, 그 프로그램은 재난 경감에 대한 지식과 노하우를 공유하는 교류의 장으로서 매우 유용할 것입니다. 앞으로 대한민국은 그동안 재난 대응을 통해 획득한 경험과 우수 경제 콘텐츠를 공유와 개티 네트워크와 플랫폼을 활용하여 국제사회에 전파할 수 있도록 최선을 다할 것입니다. 인정안전부터는 전 세계 재난 경감을 위해 인천시와 함께 UNDRR과 긴밀한 협력 관계를 유지하며 국가와 개티가 제 역량을 충분히 발휘할 수 있도록 긍정적 재정적 뒷받침을 아끼지 않겠습니다. 다시 한번 UNDRR 온이어와 개티의 창립 10년을 축하드리며 무궁한 발전을 기원합니다. 감사합니다. Uh, with many thanks to Vice Minister Kim, I now invite the remarks of Mr. Mayor Park Namchun of Incheon Metropolitan City, which will also be delivered by video. Good afternoon, good morning, and good evening to all. I'm Park Namchun, Mayor of Incheon Metropolitan City, the Republic of Korea. With all 3 million Incheon citizens, I would like to congratulate the 10th anniversary of the UNDRR o n y a g e t i And I extend my deepest gratitude to Mr. Sanjaya Bhatia, Ms. Mami m i t o r i and all the participants today who are working hard to reduce disaster risks on our planet. Throughout this year, the whole world has been fighting against COVID-19 to protect precious lives. The city of Incheon is also exerting its all-out efforts for epidemic control and prevention, as well as the safety of our citizens. In doing so, we make the best use of the ICT-based disaster response management system and data, recognized by the UNDRR as the role model of a safe and smart city. Incheon plans to apply the AI safety solutions to the areas of transportation, earthquakes, h o l a r s and fine dust starting from 2021. Through our smart technology, we will continue to preemptively respond to various disaster risks, protecting the vulnerable groups and strengthening local safety. I sincerely hope that this pandemic will end as soon as possible so that we can freely visit each other as we did before. Also, I'm looking forward to further deepening the partnership and cooperation between Incheon and the UNDRR. Once again, congratulations on the 10th anniversary of the UNDRR o n y a g e t i Thank you. Well, 
Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Mayor Park Namchun. And again, I would like to offer my thanks to Vice Minister Kim and Ms. Mami Mitsutori for these opening remarks. But now it's the time to hear from you, past training participants and our partners. And I would like to kick off uh, this morning's discussion by inviting Mr. Mohammed Kasim Hadari, uh, Deputy Minister for Policy Coordination and Planning from ADMA, which is the government of Afghanistan to lead off this morning's discussion. Mr. Hadari, please. Uh, thank you, Loretta. Thank you very much for inviting me in this occasion. So, uh, Ms. Mami Mezituri, Special Representative from the Secretariat General for Disaster Risk Reduction in Honorable Mayor in Chuan Metropol Metropolitan <coughs> City and Delegate from the various Ministry, uh, Republic of Korea part, uh, participants and also colleagues and especially my friend, Dr. Sanjaya. Uh, it gave me an amen, uh, pleasure for the opportunity uh, provided to me, uh, representing from Afghanistan National Disaster Management Authority and more, to speak on this occasion uh, at the 10th year's anniversary of the round table discussion on the training in Cap City European Institute in disaster risk management by the Global Education Training Institute, GT, in Chuan Republic of Korea. <clears throat> Uh, GITI has provided uh, an outstanding support uh, to us, working closely with ANMA, enhancing the knowledge capacity and providing uh, the knowledge base in various aspects of DRM in Afghanistan. We had a partnership with GITI in uh, which, uh, with the support of UN Habitat uh, and colleagues from the GITI traveled uh, at the way from the Korea to provide a three days training to almost 25 to 30 officials from the various ministry in Kabul in 2019. So this training has enabled us to develop our first national strategy on disaster risk management. So which is uh, known as uh, is, uh, Afghanistan strategy for disaster uh, uh, for DRR or ASDRR which has been developed in line with the Sendai framework uh, for DRR. So this strategy has uh, also been launched in the very highest level of the government, uh, also following technical guidance for the support from the, you know, the GT. So beside this, we also had a chance to attain in the regional training program uh, in which is a delegate from the government of Afghanistan uh, participating in four this training program in Inchuan we are we share our experience and approach toward development of the national strategy with uh, uh, with various official and uh, participants uh, from the Middle East and North Africa I think was the state of Arab so uh, North African region who was also participated in training so this GT has been a center for excellent on the and on behalf of, of my ministry and myself as, as, as a DRR focal point in the country, I would like to thank our colleagues in GITI for um, the support they have provided us in the whole process. We look, for, we look forward to strengthening the collaboration in the coming day to enable us to overcome uh, the disaster by building our country a disaster resilience nation. So at the end, because my time was just two minutes at the end, again, I want to say congratulations to all our uh, UNDR colleagues and especially to Dr. Sanjaya, to Sara, and all their uh, lovely colleagues in, in G Tower in South Korea, Giti. Thank you very much, Loretta and, and colleagues. Thank you, Vice Minister Hadari. And again, congratulations on your national strategy. That's been such an important achievement. It's now my pleasure to invite Ms. Ayana Lakfasarin, who's the advisor to the Deputy Prime Minister on COVID-19 prevention and emergency management from the government of Mongolia. Ayana. Thank you very much, Lori, dear excellencies. It is a great pleasure to salute to the efforts of the UNDRR Getionia 
uh, which is celebrating its 10th anniversary with such a great impact on supporting the governments and national governments and local governments in the, our Northeast Asian uh, region, sub-region. I would like to stress out the importance how the capacity building programs and training uh, tools help, um, for example, in case of Mongolia, strengthen the capacity of the local governmental um, officials, which we are now stressing on more, emphasizing the importance of the multi-stakeholder cooperation. Because before, as of now, for many counties, we have experienced the more leadership role of the governments, but now it's all about inclusive approach. And this is what brings the value of the trainings of the Getty or NIA. I would like also to point out that they are our great partnership with the Getty or NIA, and I would like to uh, commend the leadership of Sanjaya in uh, working with the government of Mongolia in rolling out the um, uh, UN campaign on making cities resilient with help really in our national government and local government to develop and um, improve our plans for disaster risk reduction, which is paying right now its benefits. As you know, in recent days, uh, just for the last three weeks, Mongolia unfortunately had uh, some community outbreaks, but we were able, we are being able to limit and work very harshly to combat their uh, spread. So we are working, and it also, I believe, thanks to the cooperation with the Getty ONIA. And thirdly, I would like to point out uh, our uh, strong partnership with the Asia office and the Getty ONIA um, offices in supporting Mongolian government to uh, implement the target E of the Sendai framework, which we commemorated with the full inclusion of all national uh, local plans by December of 2020, as the UN member state we have committed in 2015 in Sendai. And once again, I would like to congratulate everyone at Ketonia, Atens and Ephericy, me being myself a beneficiary of, of trainings of this institute, I would like to wish that your trainings bring more value, more benefits, and more capacities to the uh, all participants of disaster risk reduction strategies and the policies to make sure that our region gets rid of all and, and if strike and um, addresses the challenges of disasters. And um, I wish you all the best in the future. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much, Sayana. And um, really want to commend Mongolia. It is one of the very few first countries to have all of its cities achieve local DRR strategies. So it's such an amazing accomplishment. I just want to take note of that. It's my pleasure now, staying in Asia Pacific, to turn to Ms. Violeta Seba, who is the senior advisor to the mayor of Makati City, the Philippines, uh, for her remarks. Violeta, please. believe you're on mute. Oh, I think you're still on mute. I'm not hearing you, Violetta. Could you could you check your uh, sound, please? I think you're on mute. Try, try your mute button. Hello there. Perfect. Great. This is Beverly. Go ahead. Okay. Thank you very much, uh, Lori. Uh, warm <laughs> greetings to the hardworking uh, team of UNDRR on and Getty on your 10th year anniversary. I'm privileged and grateful to be part of the great institution as a trained trainer as well as a contributor to the development of the MCR tools such as the 10 essentials for making cities resilient, the local government self-assessment tool, the disaster resiliency scorecard that served as a reliable guide for us uh, city actors in fulfilling our commitment to the Sendai framework goal. The transformation of the Makati disaster risk reduction and management system for the past 10 years from a 
once response centric to a more proactive drr focused system is a living testament of the true value of the capacity development efforts of UNDRR Getty. Makati, aided by these tools, consistently applied since 2011, has led to the institutionalization of a dedicated DRRM office with 220 personnel, a DRRM council for policy making, the adoption of a risk sensitive land use plan and zoning ordinance in 2013 the adoption of various plans covering the four thematic areas uh, that serve as compass for resilience building, as well as the establishment of a DRR Academy for capacity building of our city stakeholders. For its initiatives, Makati was recognized as a role model of the UNISDR. Makati remains committed and ready to cooperate to share its best practices and innovations with other cities worldwide. I hope that donors and other partners, such as the uh, National Government of Korea, the ancient um, Metropolitan City Government, continue to support and collaborate with UNDRR Getty. Now more than ever, where we are living in uncertain times, we need to strengthen the capacities of local governments to implement their DRR strategies. Without a doubt, Getty, together with like-minded partners, will accelerate the achievements of the goals of the Sendai Framework and other post-2015 global agenda. Once again, congratulations, UNDRR Onay and Getty, on your 10th anniversary. Thank you. Thank you so much, Violetta. And it's now time to go to another part of the world. We're going to be hearing from Ms. Consolat Kiyenge, who's the manager of risk management in Kampala City, uh, capital authority of Uganda. So, Consolas, please. Uh, Your Excellencies, uh, greetings from Kampala, Uganda. Uh, we are excited to be here today uh, when UNDRL uh, Getty are uh, celebrating um, their 10th anniversary. We celebrate with you because uh, we are one of the cities in Africa who are living testimony of the great work of uh, UNDRL and specifically Getty office. Um, our gratitude goes to the entire team, to you Sanjaya and the entire team at Getty. You've been an immense support to us. Uh, specifically, Kampala became part of the M MCR in 2011, and uh, over the years, uh, we've been able to participate in a number of projects, programs, and uh, se several interventions. Specifically, we were selected to be part of um, uh, the Making Cities Resilient and Sustainable, uh, uh, camp uh, implementing the Sendai Framework at, at local level project, where we've uh, been able to uh, make use of the several tools to be part of the, the training from our political leadership to executive leadership to our different directors and, and several staff across the entire institution. When we started the understanding of risk management, the understanding specifically of disaster risk and climate change was actually very low. But I'm glad that today we have several people at across our entire institution who really understand what disaster risk is. We were able to use some of these tools uh, provided by UNDRL to, uh, to undertake these <laughs> assessments and action planning initially. And uh, with that, we were able to have on board several other partners who we developed the climate change action plan. At the same time, we had to move into the integration of disaster risk and climate change. So in this particular integration, we are glad to say that to date, we have a resilience strategy for, that is for disaster risk and climate change. Uh, and we could be the only African city who actually uh, has uh, this particular strategy that integrates both disaster risk and climate change. We are glad to tell you that through these trainings that we've gotten through the learning, through the city to city exchanges, for example, within Cheon, with the, the different African cities and the other cities uh, across the globe, 
uh, we've integrated, we went ahead to integrate our resilience strategy into the overall uh, city plan. That is the Kampala Integrated Development Strategy. And I'm glad to tell you that today, the strategy was approved on 29th September 2020. And um, in this strategy, we have a key theme of a key uh, pillar of our resilience, informed by all the work that we've had for the last over seven years. So we are very excited. And uh, we're excited at that um, to date there is a new campaign, the MCR 2030 where we are going to move from advocacy to implementation. So uh, we really have great hope in you. Uh, we are glad that we are part of the journey and we are uh, here to congratulate you on your 10th anniversary and uh, the hard work that you put in to support us cities at uh, a local level. Uh, specifically, um, we are also glad to say that we are part of a uh, Personal, I'm part of um, the GAP, uh, the team, the steering committee for the global assessment report. And uh, we hope to take forward what we've learned and to support more cities uh, to, to actually learn from our journey to date uh, as we work, as we continue to work with the UNDRL and uh, the team at Getty headed by Sanjaya. So our thanks to you all, our thanks to the team, uh, and we, we, we continue to pray that we collaborate with you and continue to work with you to achieve a sustainable, a vibrant, sustainable, and attractive Kampala. Thank you so much, over. Thank you so much, uh, Consulate, and, and congratulations on that integrated DRR climate change approach. I think it's so critical and it would really good if those lessons can be shared with other cities in Africa and throughout the world. Um, I'm now pleased to invite Mr. Ko Yangjo, who's the head manager of Citizens Coalition for Safety of Korea, to take the floor. UNDRR동부가사무소에 좋은 파트너로 저희 단체와의 인연을 선물로 받은 것이 아닌가 개인적으로 생각해 봅니다. 물론 저희 단체 입장에서도 코로나 19로 힘든 시기를 보내는 과정에서 좋은 파트너와 좋은 프로그램을 함께 하게 되어 매우 기쁘게 생각하고 있습니다. 어린이 재단 안전 훈련을 포함해서 지금까지 한국에서의 재난 안전 교육은 획일적으로 재난이 발생한 상황부터 시작해서 재난에 대처하는 방법을 위주로 교육을 진행해 왔습니다. 하지만 UNDRR 학교 안전 프로그램을 통해 학생들은 재난에 대한 개념을 이해하고 재난이 발생하지 않기 위해 무엇을 해야 하는지를 생각하고 깨닫는 시간을 갖게 되는 좋은 기회를 얻게 되어 이 자리를 빌어 감사의 인사를 드립니다. 앞으로도 UNDRR 동부가 사무소의 재난 위험 경감을 위한 활동을 응원하며 저희 단체도 그 활동에 함께 동참하겠습니다. 그래서 10년 후 20주년 기념식에는 얼굴을 직접 마주 보며 풍성한 성과를 함께 축하하는 자리가 오기를 기대하겠습니다. 다시 한번 10주년 기념을 축하드립니다. 감사합니다. Thank you so much. And it would indeed be wonderful to be able to meet in person. Um, it's now time to hear from the private sector, which has been such an incredible partner on our journey towards resilience. And so it's my real pleasure to invite Ms. Lisa Solario, who is the Vice President of SM Prime Holdings for Corporate Compliance and Head of Arise Philippines. Lisa. Thank you, Laurie. His Excellencies, Ms. Mami, Ms. Turi, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, good day to everyone. 
on behalf of SM and Arise Philippines, I'd like to congratulate you and DRR Onea and Getty on its 10th year anniversary. We are privileged to have been partners with Getty for more than eight years on our company's journey towards disaster risk resilience. As an active private sector member, we recognize our responsibility to implement DRR in the communities where we operate and to progress towards resilient cities. Arise Philippines and Getty have prioritized the resilience of small and medium enterprises. It makes great sense as 99% of the businesses in the Philippines comprises SMEs of disaster. The private sector must extend a helping hand. And in turn, we need partners to achieve the RR among them. We have made training this priori pro proprietors on a yearly activity with the assistance of UNDRR Yeti. And with you, we were able to train more than 300 participants together with the National Resilience County Council as lead implementing partner. We have fruition in our goal. SMEs have slowly developed their climate and disaster resilient action plans and have proper uh, 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 and have put proper the business continuity plans. The invaluable resources which UNDRR Onea Getty shared expanded the participants' knowledge, particularly in the identification and understanding of current and future risks using the UNDRR quick risk estimations. And we are pleased to signify that we will translate the QRE tool for MSMEs in two languages in Filipino and Bisaya. This supported our objectives with great impact and we aim to continue the trainings as well as include pandemic related DRR strategies in the future. Because of this, the BCP program has the full support of the national government in partnership with the Department of Trade and Industry and the National Disaster Risk Reduction Council. And the partnership has grown, long, uh, grown larger and is now being supported by more private sectors partners to magnify the capacity building <laughs> program. Thank you for your unending support towards achieving capacity development of SMEs in the Philippines. UNDRR Getty was the first to listen and heed a request to support the DRR costs for the most vulnerable sector of our society. Our gratitude. Special mention to Andy McElroy, Sanjaya Bhatti, Anne Thurland, and Sarah for their time in all those years of face-to-face -face meet sessions in the Philippines. And we look forward to more collaboration in the future workshops as we take advantage of the new normals virtual sessions. Once again, congratulations and more power. Thank you. Thank you so much, Lisa. I now invite Ms. Misu Kim of the National Disaster Training Institute of Korea to take the floor. Hello, everyone. My name is Ms. Kim, International Training Team Director of National Civil Defense and Disaster Management Training Institute, Republic of Korea. I'm very pleased to deliver celebration greeting for the 10th anniversary of Onia Getty as a partner agency. I want to express deep gratitude for their devoted work for the last 10 years. <coughs> Working with them was very interesting challenges and was so glad every occasion. Special thanks to Dr. Sanjaya and Sarah. Thank you very much. They were so good to work with them. Thank you. <laughs> for those period, UNDR has established the framework of global disaster risk reduction policy and jointly carried out training programs with the NDTI, who covered our practical disaster management techniques adjusted to their disaster risk reduction policy. Although it is not visible, the expertise fostered by UNDR and NDTI for the period are playing a very key role to save people from the disaster even at this moment. The witnesses are the trainees of 93 experts <coughs> from 26 <coughs> countries. By using those 10 year experience as a stepping stone, I'm sure UNDR Onyagiti could keep making greater contribution to global theater. Please continue to support and share them same as it now. We NDTI will join as well. Thank you. 
Thank you so much, uh, Misuk. So for our last partner intervention, I invite a colleague from the World Health Organization, and I would just like to take a moment to really thank WHO for its collaboration over the course of the last year with Getty and with UNDR uh, more generally. It's been so important as we join forces to try to work uh, more on the COVID-19 crisis. So with that, I invite Dr. Kutsia Huda, who is the head of unit for disaster risk management and resilience at the World Health Organization to take the floor, please. Thank you, Laurie. Madam Mami Mizotori, Excellencies, my esteemed UNDR colleagues and the distinguished participants, a very good morning to you all from Geneva. <laughs> I'm really honored to be part of this August event and would like to congratulate UNDR, our Office for Northeast Asia and Global Education and Training Institute one on its 10th 10 year anniversary for its endeavor in capacity development of countries in disaster risk reduction, contributing in building countries and communities resilience to disasters. I truly appreciate the galvanization of WHO's close working relationship with UNDR for the implementation and monitoring of the Sendai framework to pursue all hazard disaster risk management in countries health sector. I truly express my heartfelt gratitude for UNTRR's intense advocacy and unwavering commitment in working together with WHO along with other UN agencies and IPU to organize series of whole of society webinars on multi-sectoral coordination and partnership to enhance collaboration in disseminating early lessons learned, sharing experiences from countries, including China and Republic of Korea for prevention, preparedness, response, and recovery since the beginning of COVID-19 pandemic. In the coming years, WHO is looking forward to its continued collaboration and coordination with UNDR Office for Northeast Asia and Global Education and Training Institute to pursue emergency and disaster risk management capacity development in the countries from policy to practice. Seizing this opportunity, I would particularly like to thank Sanjaya, Sara, Anna, and other colleagues for their relentless support to WHO work. Congratulations once again, and thank you. Thank you so much, Fujia. Uh, well, I would like to thank all of you for your contributions to today's sessions, but more importantly, for making disaster risk reduction everyone's business and for your own leadership in your respective areas of work. And I would also, on behalf of the United Nations Office for Disaster Risk Reduction, to thank Vice Minister Kim of Moise and Mr. Mayor Park Namchon and the Republic of Korea for supporting the work of UNDRR, ONIA, and Getty. And this concludes the opening celebratory session. We will now continue to the first round table. And for this, I pass the floor to Mr. Sanjaya Bhatia, who's the head of UNDRR office in Incheon, Getty, and ONIA. So Sanjaya, over to you, please. Thank you very much, Lori. Uh, uh, and thank you to all the uh, speakers uh, and those who contributed with their comments. <clears throat> celebrating the 10th year uh, anniversary of Onia Getty. It is really, it's been a long journey. So uh, thank you for all your support. It would not have been possible with uh, the partnership that you provided and so many others. So, <clears throat> uh, and of course, uh, many thanks to the Ministry of Interior and Safety and the Incheon Metropolitan City for making this possible. Uh, before we uh, move to the uh, uh, to the session, I just like to remind that uh, if you have any questions, please enter in the Q and A. Uh, and I think uh, because we are a bit behind time, so we will reduce the Q and A session uh, by a few minutes so that we can catch up. So I will uh, request the speakers as they come along to see in the Q&A if there are any questions that they can type and answer. Otherwise, we will collect all the questions in any case and have the answers sent to you later, that's for sure. So today in this session, um, what we wanted to uh, look at uh, is uh, how training uh, and uh, how training is going to change uh, because of this new normal and especially looking at uh, not only, of course, the challenges we know, uh, but what are the opportunities that have been brought about by this uh, new normal? How will it impact delivery of, of training in the future? And uh, uh, what, what uh, steps or actions 
uh, are you planning to take? So we have uh, a, a panel of both government and non-government training organizations, uh, and we, they are the experts. They are the ones who are uh, providing the training, and they have continued providing the training this uh, year as well. So, so that's why it's very important to hear from them what they think uh, we learned this year and how it will impact the future uh, of training. Uh, with this, uh, let me uh, start with uh, Dr. P.K. Taneja. He's the Director General of the Gujarat Institute of Disaster Management in India, which also serves as the SARC Disaster Management uh, Center. Uh, Dr. Taneja, it's a pleasure to have you here. We have uh, been uh, doing a number of collaborations in the past. Uh, so uh, look forward to your uh, remarks. Uh, you have five minutes. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Sanjay Bhatia, distinguished panelists and esteemed participants. Good afternoon to one and all. Hope I am audible to all of you. Great. So, first of all, congratulations to UNDRR and Getty on their 10th year anniversary. And we also take pride in being part of Getty. It is indeed a pleasure to be here today and talk about the perspective of training institute with which our institute has a long standing association. We have had the opportunity to join hands in conducting excellent training programs and we look forward to such joint collaborations in the future too. Let me now share my perspectives on your 10th year anniversary. Gujarat Institute of Disaster Management is entrusted with the responsibility of human resource development, capacity building, training, research and documentation in the field of disaster risk management. It is the apex institute of the Gujarat state government in terms of capacity building in DRM and has a motto of building resi resilience. The institute is a one of its kind standalone institute at the state level, established under the provisions of the Government Act called the Gujarat State Disaster Management Act of 2003. As an aspiring center of excellence in the field of BRM, governed by a governing council, which is headed by the Honorable Chief Minister of the state at an executive council headed by the Director General of the Institute. GIDM has adopted a systematic strategy of capacity building for the state of Gujarat, having a population of more than 62 million. In addition to the training and capacity building, GIDM's core activities can be categorized into five more pillars, applied research, documentation, consultancy, partnership, and academic programs. GIDM's lush green campus spanning over 62,000 square meters and an excellent state-of-the-art infrastructure makes it possible to house the SARC disaster management centers in train unit also. Thus, in a manner of speaking, GIDM not only serves the state of Gujarat and the nation, but also the South Asian region. The first and most important mandate of GIDM is capacity building. And we made sure that even the COVID-19 imposed lockdown did not hinder that. From April 2020 to November 2020, GIDM conducted a total of 46 capacity building programs and has oriented or trained 7,130 people coming from different walks of life and different sectors. In this year, due to COVID-19, GIDM could not conduct residential trainings initially, but slowly as the lockdown was lifted, GIDM was one of the first institute in Gujarat to start residential programs following stringent protocols. These programs cover various aspects of managing disaster risks, starting from the adoption of COVID-19-induced new normal 
to training missiles on the hazard resilient construction technologies. In fact, GIDM tried to utilize the vacant period of COVID-19 induced lockdown as efficiently as possible. In a matter of four to five months, we managed to design a very basic course on disaster risk management and made it available to the public for free with the noble intention of spreading awareness about disaster risk and its overarching effects on every aspect of human life. And we try to reach out to large section of people, which is part of the mandate in SFDRR. I would like to take this opportunity to briefly highlight GIDM's strategy. Even before conducting a training program, we do a training need analysis, where we look at the need of focused capacity building specific to sectors, departments in the government. In fact, such an analysis is done by a committee, which we call Program Development and Review Committee, which comprises of internal as well as external subject matter experts, representatives from the government, representatives from NGO or civil services organizations, academicians, etc. The PDRC identifies the specific needs and suggestions program for capacity development, tailored made for different sections of the society, different levels of the government. We in fact have three levels of training L1, L2 and L3. Even the format of the program is also decided by the panel of experts and practitioners. We have different formats of training program like residential, the connection. I think what we'll have to do then is, I think we'll have to, I think we have lost his connection. Uh, I think we should move to the next speaker and then we'll come back to uh, I think we have uh, lost the connection of GIDM. Uh, I think uh, so under the circumstances, what we'll do is move to the next speaker and then come back to GIDM when they are again connected. Uh, so let me introduce uh, uh, Ms. Suni Kim. Uh, the director of the Asia Pacific Disaster Resilience Center of the uh, ICRC with whom uh, we have been working uh, for many years. So again, what do you see are the opportunities and what do you see the future of, of training? Uh, Suni, the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you, Sanjaya. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, thank you very much for giving me an opportunity to share our thoughts in this wonderful occasion. I'm Sanhee Kim, Director of Asia Pacific Disaster Resilience Center, Korean Red Cross established with the support of IFRC. First of all, I'd like to congratulate the 10th year anniversary of UNDR Office for Northeast Asia and Global Education and Training Institute. Uh, what UNDR are Onia and Getty has done in last 10 years was developing and cultivating barren land called DRR. And we still have a long journey uh, to complete this journey of making safe and resilient work. However, it is much easier for us since we have a uh, very trusted partner, UNDR, Onia and Sanjaya. Thank you much again. Uh, APDRC is the first and only Red Cross reference center located in the Asia Pacific region. It is established in 2016 and support to reduce disaster risk and enhance community resilience in Asia Pacific to make more resilient world. We do deliver the training and build the capacity of staff and volunteers of Red Cross Society in Asia Pacific region. As a training institute of DRI and community resilience, one of the challenges we faced was to define what should we deliver since the scope of DRN and resilience is various, and definition of them is also very ambi ambiguous. Sometimes participants were not able to get the exact meaning of DRR and community resilience 
even though they participate in the TOT workshop for roadmap to community resilience, which is the training to uh, Red Cross developed. It was not easy to make participants think out of boxes of traditional disaster management because most of our participants are disaster manager or practitioners. Also, the circumstances that every country faced are very different. It was difficult to set the standard we should seek for training as well. So we decided to more focus on the TOT training and participatory experience training using a VR equipment and serious game. So we delivered a basic concept of risk hazard and other basic information with a VR training and risk land a serious game, which UNDRR developed. Most training and workshop APDRC uh, delivered a face-to-face -face offline program, and then COVID-19 outbreak happened. COVID-19 forced us to change as many uh, institutions uh, already experienced. Most of our activities were canceled or postponed. APDRC has tried to host the seminar or training online, but it was challenging to maintain the quality of the training and to use the participatory method. I believe that one of the lessons COVID-19 provide is that it helped us to understand the meaning of DRR and resilience so well. It has all the characteristic of modern disaster, which is complicated, uncertain, and connected to each other. We now have been forced to think out of boxes and to break silos around us. I believe that DRR community resilience training should be integrated and comprehensive in the future. In order to do, do so, strengthening partnership is most critical matter for expanding our thoughts out of uh, typical disaster boxes. We need to connect all stakeholders like university, government, MPO, so civil societies, and the citizens themselves. Finding the best way to use non-face-to-face -face training in current situation is also very, very important. Of course, every coin has two sides. Online, online training also has a pros and cons, so we should mix face-to-face -face and online methodology smartly to complement each other to successfully achieve intended objective of the objectives of the training. APDRC has been and will test various ways to solve this issue, such as expanding partnership and network, developing online programs, such as online tutorials. Also, we are coming up with interesting contents like cartoon and animation and etc. However, we know that we cannot do it by ourselves and we need uh, support of our stakeholder, also partners. Let's work together to build safe and work uh, safe and better work together. Thank you. Well, thank you very much. And uh, uh, the, the, you are the link with the community. So uh, though we, many organizations focus on governments, national and local, but you are the ones working with the communities. In fact, in the Q&A, there is one question about examples of engagement with community. You might want to look at that. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, the, the idea to use Innovative means uh, is really welcome, like animations and cartoons and so on, uh, and to blend the face-to-face uh, -face and the online. So yeah, that probably is the way the future is going. Uh, thank you very much, Suni. And with this, I, uh, I give the floor to, again, Ms. Misu Kim, who is the uh, team director, uh, planning and cooperation division of the National Disaster Training Institute, uh, uh, NDTI of the Republic of Korea. So Ms. The floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you, Sanjay. Uh, uh, I'm Ms. Kim again from NDTI, Republic of Korea. First, I'm going to talk about what I have learned over this difficult year on the means of delivery of training. As a training institute for the last six months, we were in chaos. We waited for this pandemic finished, but it did not even become more and more serious. So we locked the door and stopped operating our institute for several months. Then we finally realized that this is not gonna be over and will last much longer than we expected. Even could it exist forever like a winter season flu. 
Another thought came to us. This unprecedented pandemic moved up our future about six years earlier, like the state of the future 2050 says. So now we are living in 2026, unpacked and own tech era that we would pay for it. It means we should adapt to this situation, not avoiding, because it is not gonna be finished. So we changed our institute environment, especially for classroom. We started from the hardware changes. It took time and money, but not much. It was not easy, but worth it. Let me introduce the picture of our classroom before and after the COVID-19. This room has been used as an indoor classroom for NDTI training. During the training, we also had a study visit, like visiting emergency operations center of local government. However, from the last June, we have been using this place as an online uh, classroom like this. Changed to an online friendly place. Not only for the theoretical classes, but for the interactive and two-way communications with the professionals at the same place. We wanted to transmit of our classroom to make students feel real. We prepared simultaneous interpretation system, video camera with high resolution, background image, microphone, audio, video mixer, and etc. Even we hired technician this time. Even in the post-corona era, we would use these online tools as a means of training. It has so much benefits. How do you measure the quality of participation? Anyhow, the quality of participation is limited compared to the offline course but minimizing the gap between on and offline course is our challenges ahead. For the next talking points, what happened? We had, uh, what opportunities we had? We could have a chance to convert to the direction of the various education contents and tools called software changes. The big gap between on and offline course is a study visit, drills, practices, and etc. During the last NDTI training, we tried to have a study visits in real time, but it was limited to the NDTI facilities only. The reaction of participation was so good though. So the challenges for the study visit for us now is the expanded study visit. We could record the on the spot or site in advance and then during the class, we could transmit to the students later real time study visit. Another challenge is drill and practices. We are planning to develop a mature disaster response training simulator. It is like an EOC education tool giving students a virtual scenario with images. Then they will analyze the situations and they will do their own play, role play. It is a big task for us again, and hopefully we could introduce you later on. That is all my comments for the training situation and the COVID Yufa. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you very much, Ms. And yes, we, we also face the same situation of of uh, initially thinking that this is a, a short time, cr short term crisis, and we we started looking at webinars, and then later we realized that this is a long term, and we have to, uh, uh, you know, um, adapt, as you said, uh, adapt and not try to avoid. Uh, but it's very encouraging to see uh, you are actually practicing the future of training. So with the uh, VR uh, virtual simulators and so on and uh, hopefully we'll be able to see that uh, soon. Uh, I, I believe uh, Mr. Taneja is back. So um, Mr. Taneja, uh, please, uh, you can continue.
Yes. Go ahead, please. Think you are muted. I think there is a sound issue. I suggest while we try to resolve that perhaps we, we move on. Go on to the... Yes. Uh, so Mr. Taneja, we'll come back to you uh, uh, as soon as it's resolved. Uh, let me uh, give the uh, floor and introduce uh, Ms. Uh, Irina Oltian, Head of Research Center for Risk Management uh, from the uh, All Russian Scientific Research Institute of Civil Defense and Emergency Management or MRCOM uh, uh, from the Russian Federation. So, uh, Irina, the floor is yours. Uh, thank you, Sanjay. Uh, warm congratulations from All Russian Scientific Institute of Civil Defense and Emergencies. Uh, at first, I would like to say that uh, in the past, our institute. Uh, have used distance learning, additional online courses, webinars on disaster risk reduction. Uh, therefore, we have experience of such work. We combined it with offline format. But in this year, uh, the tradition, uh, trans transition to distance learning format, it was logical and justified. Uh, despite the experience in conducting online courses and trainings, it was required to search additional resources uh, for the accelerated digitalization of educational process. It intensifies the usage of uh, existing platforms and services for online learning, improves the content and design of courses. Uh, in my opinion, there are significant advantages it online training, saving time and money, avoid exp expensive business trips through different regions in such big countries, Russia, uh, which leads to a separation from current work, increase in audience coverage. Let me dwell briefly on the pilot project that we launched this year. As you know, only eight municipalities have joined the My City is Getting Ready campaign to popularize uh, the campaign in Russia to identify the best domestic practices for disaster risk uh, management. Ministry of Emergency Situations of Russia has organized in this year in the, uh, the all Russian competition, my city is without dangers. For the partic participations of the com competition, videos on equations with the methodological assessment materials, the methods themselves, etc., we developed and posted on the website of the Institute. Online consultation are held. The new format of work without videos with training materials made it possible to attract more than 250 municipalities in the competition. When assessing uh, the quality of participation uh, and the level of learning, we same as during offline learning. We use various tests that must be com completed in a limited time. The uh, specify of our courses is that they are designed for professionals who are constantly working in the field of protection and pop uh, the population and territories from disasters and have a serious motivation to improve their level of knowledge. Online learning is general and in the field of disaster risk reduction is a serious cognitive and social process that required significant investment to create the maintain of online learning platform, the reliability of internet channels, posting contents, creating high quality online courses, and supporting learners in the online environment. In the new life conditions, more attention of paid to content, visualization, concentration of materials, 
individualization of trainings, additional investment for technical support of the online platforms, and the creation of high quality online courses. In the current conditions of rapidly changing educational, when lifelong learning becomes relevant, uh, future education uh, will transfer to online uh, sessions. In this year, we started developing an uh, innovate, innovation project, the creation of an information and educational web portal with an integrated e-learning system. We want to move away from uh, predefined sets of questions and answers by intro introduction artificial intelligence uh, technology. In other words, our educational portal will implement a te uh, teaching dialogue between a teacher and a student using open questions and open answers. I hope that, that next year we can see the first results. Thank you for your attention. Well, thank you very much, Irina, for sharing this, uh, these, these learnings and again, uh, pushing the boundaries of technology for uh, for training. I think that is something which may, perhaps the next panel will also pick up on. Um, uh, we, we have heard from two speakers already about how uh, technology is being used to to improve the quality uh, and to uh, to ensure the uh, kind of change in behavior as as one question has asked. So I would draw your uh, attention to the Q&A also, if you are interested, there is one question on, uh, on um, uh, how do you ensure the change of behavior, but I think the use of AI uh, for a teaching dialogue is, is definitely a really big step forward in training and congratulations for that. Uh, so with this, let me go to um, Mr. Ko, uh, Ko, uh, Ko Yangju. Uh, the manager uh, of the Citizens Coalition for Safety, who is involved in um, training a large number of school students and teachers uh, around Korea. Uh, and uh, uh, you can use the globe interpretation uh, icon and uh, go for English. So, uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Ko, the floor is yours. Thank you. 어, 먼저 이 자리에 초대해 주신 거에 대해서 진심으로 감사드립니다. 어, 제 발표 내용에 대한 이해를 돕기 위해 그 먼저 저희 단체의 활동 소개를 간단히 말씀드리도록 하겠습니다. 저희 단체는 주로 안전교육과 캠페인 등을 통해 국민들의 안전의식을 개선하는 활동을 하고 있는 시민단체입니다. 어, 교육은 전국적으로 어린이를 포함한 안전약자를 대상으로 약 70여만 명에게 실시를 하고 있고요. 어, 교육 방법은 직접 방문하여 교육하는 형태입니다. 하지만 올해는 코로나19로 인해 교육을 희망하는 기관에 방문하지 못하는 상황이 되어 교육 활동을 거의 못하게 되었습니다. 학교에서는 안전교육은 물론이고 교과 수업마저도 온라인을 통한 원격 수업으로 일부를 대신하고 있는 실정입니다. 온라인을 통한 원격 수업이라는 낯선 환경 속에서 학생들은 집중력이 떨어지고 과제물이나 준비물이 무엇인지 등을 인지하지 못하는 것을 제 주변에서도 쉽게 볼수 있었습니다. 이처럼 원격 수업이 대면 수업과 비교했을 때 학습 효과가 떨어지는 것을 저희는 느낄 수 있었습니다. 코로나19가 장기화되면서 원격 수업은 선생님과 학생들이 화면 속에서 서로 얼굴을 보며 수업하는 쌍방향으로 개선되었고 그동안 학생들도 이러한 환경에 많이 적응하게 되었습니다. 원격 수업이 대면 수업보다는 교육의 효과가 떨어지는 것은 사실이지만 교육을 받지 못하는 것보다는 훨씬 좋다는 것은 분명한 또 하나의 사실입니다. 그리고 원격 수업의 장점을 살린다면 대면 교육으로 하기 어려운 것들을 할수 있을 것이라는 생각도 들었습니다. 원격 수업의 장점은 학생과 선생님이 어디에 있던 온라인을 통해 할수 있다는 것입니다. 어, 현재는 원격 수업이 모든 학교에 정착되어 아무리 멀리 떨어져 있더라도 교육을 할수 있는 환경이 구축되어 있는 상황입니다. 이를 활용한다면 그 도서벽지 학교의 학생들에게도 외부의 여러 선생님과 다양한 학습 프로그램을 접할 수 있는 기회를 줄수 있는 것이 큰 장점이라고 생각이 됩니다. 
저희 단체에서는 내년에 도서벽지 학교의 어린이들을 대상으로 원격 수업을 활용한 안전교육을 실시하는 계획을 세우고 있습니다. 대면 교육이 당연하게 여겨졌던 코로나19가 발생하기 전에만 해도 원격 수업은 생각조차 시도조차 하지 않았었던 일이었을 것입니다. 하지만 지금 상황에서의 원격 수업은 너무나 일상적인 모습으로 자리 잡아 방문하기 힘든 지역에 원격 수업을 추진하는 것이 가능해졌기 때문입니다. 이처럼 원격 수업은 도서벽지에 살고 있는 어린이들에게는 외지와 교류할 수 있는 기회를 만들어주는 긍정적인 현상이라고도 생각이 됩니다. 하지만 원격 수업의 단점을 보완해야 하는 과제도 있을 것 같습니다. 원격 수업을 할때꼭 해야 할 것은 쌍방향 소통을 통해 학생들의 이해 정도를 파악하는 과정이 꼭 필요하다고 생각이 됩니다. 올해 저는 서울시 교육청과 함께 학생들의 안전지수를 검사하여 취약한 안전 분야에 대한 맞춤형 교육을 실시하는 사업을 수행한 바 있습니다. 이를 통해 획일적인 교육 내용을 전달하기보다는 학생들에게 꼭 필요한 정보를 확실하게 전달하는 것이 매우 중요하다는 것과 교육의 효과를 확인할 수 있는 평가 과정을 적용하는 것이 꼭 필요하다는 것을 배울 수 있었습니다. 현재 저희 단체는 UNDRR 보조금 사업으로 UNDRR 학교 안전 프로그램 교육 사업을 진행하고 있는데요. 내년에도 보조금 사업을 추진하게 된다면 이론 교육을 원격 수업으로 진행하는 것과 평가, 평가 과정을 추가하여 교육의 효과를 확인해 보는 방법도 적용해 보고 싶은 생각이 들었습니다. 어, 코로나19로 인해 우리 사회는 많은 변화를 짧은 시간 동안 경험하고 있습니다. 변화에 대처하고 적응하기 위해 시간과 노력, 고통과 희생이 따르고 있습니다. 하지만 변화의 흐름 속에서 그동안 우리가 신경 쓰지 못하고 놓치고 있던 것들에 대한 발견을 하는 긍정적인 측면도 살리는 기회가 되었으면 좋겠습니다. 감사합니다. 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 So uh, uh, and uh, and that has really helped uh, to to spread the message. Uh, and maybe this is something which again uh, will will play a role in the future. Uh, just uh, before closing this session, I would like to uh, ask uh, Mr. Taneja uh, because uh, now we are uh, over time. Uh, could you uh, just uh, focus on on your key key messages that you want to say uh, over two minutes uh, maximum. Mr. Taneja? Mr. Taneja from GIDM? OK, uh, so we'll see if uh, reconnect later. Uh, so with this, I think uh, I will close this panel uh, because uh, we, we want to give enough time. But I think uh, this um, the points that have come out from this panel uh, give give some food for thought for the next panel also, and I can build on this. Uh, so with that, I would like to introduce Mr. Magnus Hegelstein, uh, who is the Capacity Development for DRR uh, a program director of the Disaster Risk Management and Climate Change Adaptation Program of the Lund University uh, in Sweden. Uh, and for those who, of you who have, have not uh, come uh, in, uh, have not been able to engage with Magnus in the past, let me tell you, he is the expert on capacity development for DRR. He's the you know one-man uh, shop for it, and uh, it, it is our privilege to have Magnus here with us. And uh, Magnus, I hand over to you uh, in your capable hands, the panel too. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Sanjaya. And just a short reminder before we start that if you have questions, uh, please uh, 
put them in the Q and A feature, and also who you would like to address to the uh, in the panel. With that, uh, dear Ms. Suturi, Excellencies, distinguished panelists, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to session two and the roundtable discussion on innovations in delivery of capacity development for disaster risk reduction. I first would like to say it's a great honor to be part of the 10th anniversary of yeah, Onea and Getty. And well, to be innovative in capacity development, we may need to ask ourselves, why should we develop capacity? In our area, it's to deal with disruptions, disturbances, disasters. There's the need to work with anticipation, recognition, adaptation, risk reduction and preparedness for effective response and recovery and learn from that. And that in involves a lot of uncertainty and complexity in order to have a resilient society. This means in capacity development initiative with its activities, as well as with the COVID-19 situation, we don't know at the beginning if we have a simple situation with a clear connection between cause and effect with best practices, or if it's a more complicated we perhaps several alternatives for good practices. Or if it's a more complex situation where unclear, there are unclear cause and effect relationship, where there needs to, where we need to test and have an emergent innovative approach where capacity development for sure comes in to play an important role. This, this means a lot of uncertainty that we need to accept and to control or, or rather to let control go, which can create a lot of discomfort. With this, I would like to hand over to a panel of five speakers representing academia, science and technology and the United Nations. We are mainly focusing on how and what have you learned from COVID-19 about capacity development for disaster risk reduction how, how can we innovate for the future to enhance capacity for disaster risk reduction in five, 10, 15 years from now? So I would like to, first I turn to Mr. Rajib Shaw, Professor KU University and Chair UN Science Technology Advisory Group, STAG, and Co-Chair Asia Pacific STAG. Please, Rajib. Thank you, thank you very much, Magnas. Um, a big congratulation to UNDRR team uh, and all the stakeholders. Uh, it's a real proud moment. And also I need to start with an apology. I'm that sorry, I we don't hear meeting. you, Rajiv. Can you hear me now? I can hear you, Rajiv. Yes. Go ahead. I think, I'd be, can I continue or? Yes, please do. I, I can read you loud and clear. Okay. <laughs> so uh, with, with an apology, I actually need to start with an apology because I have another meeting and this meeting is a little bit delayed. So I will be very brief and I can't join in the QA session, but I will be able to possibly uh, respond to some questions if there is any need. My key, uh, going back to your first question that what we learned from this COVID-19. And I think that we are still learning definitely. And it's, it's a very, very important learning opportunity. Uh, I will talk about possibly three specific things which are very valid for the capacity building uh, uh, initiative or capacity development initiative. Number one is that the living with uncertainty. I think that is get, getting a sort of key word these days that we didn't know, like we do some capacity building for certain aspect, but we see something totally new thing. So how we adopt our knowledge our whole training into the new aspect. I think that's very, very important. That's number one. Number two is the emphasizing on local action. And I always say that the pandemic is global, but its responses are local. So how we actually recognize the importance of the local action and try to bring that into, of course, the local government's capacity, but also link it to the higher up authorities capacity. So 
what I say that filtering up the critical knowledge from the field, from the community and filtering up to the upper side will be very, very important. That's my second point. My third point is the learning through innovation and this pandemic could actually make lots of lockdown to many different things, but it could not lock down the new innovative thought. So we have already seen lots of new innovations in different fields, whether it is the existing technology, whether it, it is the existing healthcare system, whether it is the new disruptive technology. So how we actually build on this type of different technologies in the future capacity building program. So those will be my means main three take out for uh, what we have learned. And going back to your second point, that how can we innovate for the future uh, to enhance the capacity for uh, disaster risk reduction? You also mentioned that why we do the capacity. And to me, we are enhancing the capacity to equip the people, the community, the governance system to solve some problem. And I think the understanding the problem or co-designing the problem with a different stakeholder from the very beginning is very, very important. Because many times we do some, something like with a mindset that, okay, we know the problem. But when you go to the field, when you talk to the community, possibly there are different aspects, different priorities. So I think the co-designing the problem from the uh, field, I think that's very important. The second point here is also go beyond the traditional disciplinary thinking. I think everyone has their disciplinary zone and which is good. And we, I always say that this is the comfort zone, but we need to come out of our comfort zone and try to collaborate, try to learn the same problem if an architect, if an urban planner, if a civil engineer, if a social scientist talk, they will be talking about different dimension and how we put that together. I think that's very, very important. So coming out of our comfort zone is very important. So that's number two. And number three, like the innovation, I always prefer to have the young brain, like the involvement of the youth in the innovation process is very, very important. So how we engage, uh, the local youth participation, uh, making more different types of, uh, giving them some different uh, framework or different uh, platform where they can actually put their inputs. I think the youth involvement is very, very important. So I think those are the points from my side and thank you very much for this opportunity. Thank you. Thank you, Rajib, for your contribution. and. Uh, as you mentioned, the importance of always or still learning and living with uncertainties and uh, uh, as well as uh, the importance in initiatives with capacity development, what, what is really the problem and how, how do we go about it? And all in this process, we need to step outside our comfort zones and to also to make that happen, we need to engage with uh, local and local youth participation. So. Thank you. Thank you very much for your contribution. With that, I would like to hand over to uh, Mr. Jerry Stokes, professor at the State University of New York, Korea, and chair of the development of technology and society. Please, Jerry. Thank you very much, Magnus. And thank you all from UNDRR for the invitation. Uh, one year ago, I went to my first UNDRR meeting uh, and uh, the Northeast uh, Disaster Risk Reduction Discussion of Technology, uh, we didn't discuss pandemics at all. Uh, and while the country of Korea actually ran an exercise last December on that, um, I think we can all say that what a difference a year makes in terms of how we think about disaster risk reduction. Um, I, at the end of that meeting, Sarah made the comment that uh, experience is perhaps the greatest trainer and as I reflected on what's happened over the past year, I had uh, three thoughts that I'd like to share. The first is that I think the training that we are doing uh, through UNDRR and all of the affiliates is very important. But I think that the human expertise is needed on a far larger scale than we're really training to. Uh, and my view of this is that uh, 
if we rethink the concept of national service to create a larger spinning reserve to help in times of national need, independent of the military, I think we've got a certain advantage here. I think by incorporating this capability into a system of national service where everyone serves, uh, men, women, uh, where uh, they uh, have some time of service and then they have some time of reserve, you would build over time a capacity in every country that could be mobilized much more promptly, much more flexibly. And uh, I could make the individuals be trained for many disasters. There are those that need just plain labor, contact tracing, supporting of evacuation, decontamination, healthcare support, uh, even firefighting. Uh, these are things that you need the human resource. And these individuals, I think, could not only serve their own nations, but uh, I think we've seen examples where such capability could be used for international mutual support as well. The second point I'd like to raise is that I think situational awareness is in, has immense value. This is one of the things that was discussed in detail a year ago. Uh, and I think that situational awareness is need, we need to reflect on the fact that it's not just what's happening, but what has happened in the past. And I have to admit, I've been watching, I watch the numbers every day, and I think the lack of preparation for the second and third wave of pandemics is a little bit shocking to me around the world. The experience of the 1918 pandemic seems to be ignored by many governments. And uh, I think that after the first wave, there was a time where governments and locales could in fact prepare for the second and third waves. And I think Right now we're in the situation where people are dying again because hospitals and healthcare workers are again overstressed, whereas we could have been building capacity. Uh, disaster uh, risk reduction is first and foremost about preparation, resources and people. We're getting better at this for intense weather events, but I think we need to learn how to do that in other domains as well. And then finally, uh, I, I think a sensitive topic, I think, uh, social systems, we're finding that social systems and biases can get in the way of doing the right thing. We've seen how politics and culture and social biases have gotten in the way of people helping, helping people to do the right thing around the world. Even when the government works hard to honor privacy, the public has been less forgiving. Uh, and this promotes fear and secrecy. And these are, in the case of the pandemic, they're great obstacles to stopping the spread of disease. I, I'll confess I don't have a solution, but I think it's something that needs to be discussed and understood. Perhaps if we had a larger a group of people uh, pursuant to my, my, the point I made about national service, that might help. I think Mr. Coe's uh, education in schools is the way of doing that. Um, but I think we need to min mis minimize the risks that come from problematic human behavior. Um, uh, we can be our own worst enemies and we can have, be dealing with two disasters at a time, not just the natural disaster we have, but the disaster of inappropriate and uh, uh, unacceptable social response to it as well. So those are my observations and I'll uh, return the balance of my time to the floor. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Jerry, uh, for a nice input. And you emphasize in this with uh, have a national service with human expertise, the imp importance of a situation on awareness, as well as when you at the very end, there are, we have challenges for sure, uh, but we should not neglect either the our problematic uh, human behavior sometimes when the, the bias we come with, which come into play when we're going to work with disaster risk reduction as well as the learning and capacity development. Thank you very much. I would like to continue and introduce Mr. Young Park, Professor and Director of the KAIST Initiative for Disaster Studies. And I do know that uh, Mr. Young Park will address uh, things such as uncontracted versus contacted and national agonies, ego, egosis, oh sorry, my pronunciation is not so good today, but national egosis versus human collaboration, risk governance versus goodwill governance. With that, I would like to hand over to Mr. Young Park. Thank you, Meganos, your nice introduction. And also, I'd like to take this opportunity to thank 10th year of 
UNDR Korean office, especially Mr. Sanjaya and Sarah, other uh, colleagues. Uh, your folks did a wonderful job, and I take this opportunity to deliver special thanks to all of you. Uh, def definitely, Korean is much better than English, so I like to switch to uh, Korean for my speech. And I like to uh, su uh, summarize my presentation in three categories. First, uh, related to the questions, what is impact? Two uh,번째는 uh, new normal. 세 번째는 innovation. 세 번째는 yeah. 그리고 어, 여기서 사용될 키워드로는 uncontacted와 contacted의 대비 national egoism, the human humane collaboration. 그리고 uh, 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 I like to compare lead governance versus good will governance. 어, 모두가 지금 교육을 다 uncontacted로 하고 있습니다. 한국은. 앞으로 이 팬데믹이 끝나더라도 이 언컨택티드 교육은 계속될 것 같습니다. 그리고 컨택티드 교육도 계속될 거고요. 그래서 미래를 보면 언컨택티드와 컨택티드가 서로 혼재된 교육이 이루어질 거다. 그러면 이이 교육 시스템 및 교육 교재 이런 것들을 어떻게 바꿔야 되느냐 라는 것들을 우리가 심각하게 생각을 해줘야 됩니다. 두 번째 에, 제가 또 강조했던 것은 내셔널 에고이즘 이번에 팬데믹이 발생하면서 여러 나들, 나라들이 행한 그 여러 가지 이, 이 일들을 보면 사실은 다국민을 보호하기 위한 최선책들을 했지만 다른 사회적 약자 하는 주변의 이웃들은 별로 돌보지를 않았다 라는 생각이 들고요. 그 다음에 WHO라는 좋은 기관이 있지만 은 결국은 중국과 미국의 그 비슷한 싸움 비슷한 걸로 해서 엉망이었다. 앞으로 글로벌 팬데믹이 일어났을 때 유연 기관들이 과연 효율적으로 일을 할수 있을까? 이치다거리 하는 거 이외에 효율적으로 일을 할수 있는가를 한번 생각을 해봐야 되고요. 그 다음에 우리들한테 빅 브라더였던 미국이나 중국 같은 나라들이 과연 우리의 이웃이 될수 있겠는가? 글로벌 팬데믹에서. 또 한번 생각을 해봐야 된다라는 생각을 가지고 있고요. 그래서 사회적 약자를 돌본다는 관점에서 우리가 새로운 이벨류에이션이 필요하다. 현재 우리가 가지고 있는 리스크 이벨류에이션에 근거를 한 리스크 가버넌스로는 자국민이 우선입니다. 다른 나라 먼 곳에 사는 이웃들이 자국민을 우선해서 리스크 매니지먼트의 고려가 될 수가 없습니다. 따라서 이와 같은 팬데믹 속에서 멀리 떨어져 있는 이웃들도 고려를 하려면 리스크에 대한 이벨류에이션이 굿윌 굿윌에 근거를 해야지 그렇지 않으면 어, 어, 결코 좋은 성적을 낼수 없다라는 거고요. 이와 같은 구비일도 어, 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 형성하면서 여러 가지 새로운 언컨택티드와 컨택티드에 대한 시스템들을 제대로 만들어내기 위해서는 현재 많이 세, 사용되고 있는 기술 플랫폼을 이용해서 다양한 교육 방법을 만들어내야 된다. 그래서 저는 AI 드리븐 클라우드 베이스드 에듀케이션 플랫폼을 재난 쪽에도 도입을 해야 된다라는 생각을 하고 있습니다. 감사합니다. 사라가 나타났습니다. 끝내겠습니다. 
Thank you, Mr. Young Park. Uh, very interesting indeed about the new normal, the innovate, innovation that we need to, to look into more learning, education could be uncontracted and contacted, and we need to change the way how we do things today and be more flexible and open for different solutions. Again, it comes back to collaboration and the importance of that, the human collaboration as well as the willingness to be part of this and, and also to deal with risk governance in our field. With that, I would like to hand over to Bogun Shim, head of the United Nations Project Office on Governance, please. Yeah, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. My name is Bogun Shim head of the United Nations Project Office on Governance, a part of DPIDG of UNDESA. It is my great honor uh, uh, to uh, uh, be speaking at this very important occasion, marking the 10th anniversary uh, of UNDRR Oni and Gedi and congratulate Mr. Sanjay Abhatia, the head of, and the entire team, UNDRR, Oni and Getty has been a consistent partner of UNPOG in delivering several capacity development activities, especially on DRR and resilience. The COVID-19 pandemic brought unparalleled disruptions with a significant impact on capacity development activities I would proceed to provide responses to the key questions. First, are we doing things well? Yes, uh, we are still in a tunnel of the COVID-19 crisis, but the world is making every effort to eradicate it. Though there are difficulties between revitalizing the economy and eradicating the virus, we can say that everyone, every country is doing their best. Second, how and what have you learned from COVID-19 about capacity development for DRR? How can you innovate for the future? Uh, one is the importance of early response to a disaster. The COVID-19 crisis had problems with its uh, initial response the success or failure of disaster risk mitigation depends on how effectively disaster risk is initially suppressed. Two is effective leadership. Leadership should be integrated with a central coordination unit involving expert and technocrats in managing disaster. There should be a lead agency at the core coordinating activities and mobilizing the needed human and material resources and capacities for DRR. Three is effective national to local government coordination as a whole of government coordination and the multi-sectoral approach is fundamental. A fully empowered local government with effective national coordination is required. Four is the stakeholder engagement for the whole of society response. This calls for governments to engage and collaborate with the key stakeholders, including the private sector, civil society, academia, etc. The important role and needs of the vulnerable should be considered. Five is crisis preparedness and response arrangements. There should be established manuals, templates, laws and regulations, institutional settings and resilient infrastructure. Six is the role of effective communication strategy. There should be established channels for effective and timely risk communication with measures to prevent the spread of misinformation and fake news. Personal data protection laws and regulations are needed. Seven is regional and uh, international partnerships in health emergencies to help share technology and other innovative solutions across the societies. The justice in most cases are transboundary and it's important to share resources 
through partnerships and the international cooperation. Aid is leveraging science, technology, and the innovation, including data-driven decision-making. Innovative technologies, including ICTs, helps promote uh, access to critical and innovative public services in times of public health emergencies. Furthermore, uh, effective and timely data analysis is key for risk-informed decision-making, and this can help streamline early warning platforms. In conclusion, taking this COVID-19 as a lesson, we need to have a well-prepared response system for future disaster management. Uh, looking at this pandemic, it is important to respond to such disasters by medical staff and public officials, but they cannot be overcome by themselves. I realize that it can be overcome by participating, cooperating with every sector, including the police and civil society. Everyone needs to look at the response system for each field with a sense of ownership in responding to disasters. Congratulations again on the 10th anniversary, and I wish you and DRR only get this continued growth and collaboration with us. Thank you for your attention. Over to you. Thank you, Bugin. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you for sharing a lot of uh, good examples and experience uh, from the COVID-19, the importance of early response to disasters and um, to ensure we have effective leadership taking account before uh, proactive work with mitigation, coordination, a multi-sectoral approach coming back maybe to this national expert resource, the need for it and develop it, risk communication, share resources through partnership. Thank you very much. With this, I will come to the, our last panelist, Ms. Yona Kritaru. Uh, she's a capacity development specialist uh, at CADRI Partnership Secretariat. Uh, Yona, please. Thank you very much, Magnus, and uh, good morning, good afternoon, dear colleagues. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here today with you. Um, as Magnus introduced me, my name is Ioana Kreitaru. I work for the Capacity Development um, Initiative, CADRI. Um, I'm based in Geneva, and, and the program that I work for works in capacity development for disaster risk reduction. Now, I have three main uh, points that I wanted to reflect upon in this very important um, and, and interesting session on capacity development and innovation in light of the COVID uh, experience. Now, the first, the first point that I wanted to reflect upon is really that capacity development is not only about training and learning. Capacity development is about um, building the capacities of our counterparts, be they, them um, national um, authorities, local authorities, NGOs, members of the community. And so this effort would entail working with them hand by hand um, on, on, on capacitating and on building the awareness and building the technical capacities that are required for them to actually implement or oversee disaster risk reduction activities. Now, this really brings me to my second point, which is on the fact that capacity development really entails trust building. And building trust takes time, it takes human connection, and is absolutely fundamental to sustain impactful and um, uh, necessary capacity development. It's very interesting that at Kadri, we have really learned that establishing a trust-based relationship with the beneficiaries, in, in our case, that is mostly the government representatives that are uh, benefiting from the program service, is absolutely important to making sure that whatever service is delivered to the government um, or the local authorities, it is really uptaken, integrated and followed through. So in light of the COVID-19 experience, we would say that, you know, establishing this human connection that builds trust remains as important. While we are delivering some of our services online and we're trying to establish a remote work system and culture, it is still important to build this human connection. It is still important to build the trust and um, the, the relationships with, with the beneficiaries. 
And obviously at Kadri, because we are a global partnerships bringing together UN agencies, the IFRC, the World Bank in support of government priorities, we do that by working with the UN country teams and capacitating them to be in the forefront of service delivery. Now, the other point, and maybe the last one I wanted to raise for this session, is that investing in local capacity development remains critical. And it remains critical really for long lasting change. And the UN needs to invest in making sure that the last mile becomes the first mile and actually nobody is left behind. So in, in the UN, we, we have this commitment to the localization agenda, which means that we really need to build the capacity of the local population, of the local authorities, because ultimately the impact from disasters, the impact from climate change are never national. They're always local and they impact the real people on the ground. So as the UN, we need to make to continue making um, an effort in capacitating the local um, communities, the local authorities, the NGOs that are really on the forefront of support, whether it's in prevention activities or response, they need to have the understanding. They need to have the technical skills, the awareness, the technology, and also the connection to make sure that they're protected, to make sure that they know what they need to do in the case of a disaster, but also so that they are aware of the preventative uh, behavior and, and actions that they need to take in order to avoid um, creating new risk. So with this, let me stop here. It's really been a privilege. Thank you very much for the invitation. And I look forward maybe to uh, some exchange on the topics that have been raised by various speakers. Magnus, over to you. Thank you very much, Iona, and thank you for the insightful uh, talk. Um, so yes, there are uh, many things from all panelists, but uh, from you, Iona, I, I address uh, trust building. I, I don't think we should under, underestimate that. Maybe uh, from my own experience, I, I'm a, more like a pre-academic. I've been working in the business uh, first before I came back to university for 12 years. And then now I, I do both uh, some uh, work outside the university and I also work with research and theory. But, but uh, trust building, maybe uh, something like uh, building a capacity through friendship is a way forward and, and the importance of human connections and meet. Uh, you also address again, it is on the local level, it happens, uh, the importance on that and to, to have a good fit to the local context. And with this, what we see now with the COVID-19, with, with, to having the ICT to be able to communicate uh, and the adoption of virtual work and learning modalities, I do think also that is, it is the future. Um, with that and with time management, uh, I would like to wrap up the se se second session, roundtable discussion. I know there is a lot of going on in the chat and the Q&A where uh, we are addressing it in writing the answers. So with that, I would like to just to conclude. Today we have many interesting points and experiences from our panelists. And I would say COVID-19 has forced us to work online. It's a digital learning revolution, I would say. We, we have a new instrument to work with uh, that has opened up new ways of working, innovative ones. But it, it is at the distance with less travels and physical meetings. Instead being present as hands-on expert, technical advisors, teachers or facilitators or whatever, uh, this has happened now remotely and it is here to, for short, it is here to stay. A window of opportunity was created, however. I will share an example I heard during the spring where this kind of traditional, where you may have an external consultant comes in to support a capacity development initiative or program, uh, but could not now travel anymore and instead, instead worked in a back office, a support function with uh, coaching and mentoring and to let the local or the internal consultant uh, to support that uh, and do or rather drive that process, the capacity development initiative. So depending on the situation, we, we need different instruments for sure. We need to adapt 
we need to know which instrument we should use when. Also, to be flexible and take different roles in a capacity development initiative or program and in partnerships, depending on the situation. It's not just a, a, a fixed role we have, it is dynamic and it's emerging, depending on the situation and what we are up to. So activities and meetings, I think, must still take place on the ground in the local context to enhance a dialogue between partners, to build up trust, networks, small talk, take time to drink tea together, which also encourages mutual learning. With this, I would like to congratulate you and your Uniageti and their 10th year anniversary. So thank you all for your participation and I will hand over. Thank you, thank you, Magnus. Thank you to all of you. Um, you. It was really, really wonderful to hear um, your insights into all that we have faced during this year, how we have adapted, but how much more we need to do. And I, I just want to really echo also the point of not losing losing touch with the, the human aspect. Uh, this will be an ongoing challenge as we, as we embrace new technology as well to not only deliver training, but to see how we can capacitate further. Um, so on behalf of the UN Office for Disaster Risk Reduction uh, in Incheon, our Office for Northeast Asia and our Global Education and Training Institute. I uh, conclude the session. Thank you all again for your great participation, your interaction in the chat. We fell a bit short of time in the Q&A, but I think many uh, questions have been answered and uh, we plan to uh, pull out the key messages and to share them uh, with all of you and continue the learning and exchange. It was really wonderful to have you all and uh, we, have appreciated all of your collaboration and partnership over the last 10 years, or if it only began this year, to, to our mutual future. Thank you all very much and have a great day wherever you are. Thank you. Thank you, Sarah. Thank, Thank you all. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you, everyone. Goodbye and have a good day. Cheers. Bye-bye. Thank you.